Hello, hello, hello. Uh, good afternoon. What time is it? About 11.43, and I uh, hope you can hear me. Um, uh, it's been a while since I've been on here. I feel uh, moved to do this live, and uh, I think a lot of people are dealing with um, a lot of things that I think we all can discern are out of our control. Let me uh, move this over just a little bit. And, and some things are out of our control. So I just want to encourage you first and foremost, if you saw the title to this live and you were kind of like, huh, you know, maybe that's something I need to, to pay attention to. I want to encourage you first and foremost that uh, some of these things are, are not up to you. You're not being uh, flooded with suicidal thoughts. You're not being flooded with depression. You're not being flooded with thoughts of not being wanting to go outside all of, because of your own doing. Um, these things can be attacks and uh, I want to talk a little bit about that. So why am I on here? So, um, I mean, we all go through these attacks. My wife and I have been praying uh, through some things and it's just like day to day. You never know what might come up and you are a target. The Bible talks about how the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. Like he sends and I'm talking about Satan. He sends uh, opposition your way. He sends uh discomfort you know he doesn't want you to be in peace he doesn't want you to experience the best the best and the blessings of god and he is a lawbreaker he is lawless he is a liar he is a murderer and he is uh, on his job now i can say all of that and smile because the bible speaks explicitly to those of us who believe in christ jesus that we have authority uh, the Bible says that we always triumph in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that we are not as sheep before the slaughter. We are not those who have no hope. We are more than conquerors through him, Jesus Christ himself. Um, but I do want to go through a couple of scripture um, references with you just to give you some ammunition uh, and I want to say this, if you feel like you are in a crisis mode, if you feel like you are at a place where um, it's beyond your ability to handle, I would encourage you to reach out to someone you know and trust and begin to be transparent about what it is that you're going through. In fact, let's start there. That that actually pertains to one of the scripture um, areas I want to talk about in Matthew uh, chapter 18. So let me start with, um, let's see. Hmm. Let's start in verse 12. So it says, uh, let's change the translation. Let's change it to New International Version. It says in verse 12, what do you think in Matthew 18? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, Will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? So this is the heart of our father. He comes for us when we need him. Verse 13 says, and if he finds it, if he finds that sheep, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. So that means those of us who might be out of the realm of feeling safe, right? We're, we're feeling a little vulnerable. Verse 14, in the same way your father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. So his heart is not for you to be oppressed. His heart is not for you to feel alone. His heart is not for you to feel attacked. His heart is not for you to be uncomfortable. So we're going to continue to read this. Verse 15, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. Verse 16, but if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. So here I think it's really interesting how Jesus, he spells out this process. He says, if someone sins against you, go point out their fault between the two of you. If they listen, then all is well. But if they don't, then you need to go and take them to 
uh, one or two others with you and then go at this person. And if that doesn't work, bring the whole church. Now, I'm going to take this process and I'm going to move it into spiritual warfare. So let's say you have a thought uh, about depression. You know, you feel woe is me or whatever the case may be. You can take that straight to the enemy. You can say, listen, you don't have authority in my mind to speak to me this way. I am a child of God. I have peace. The Holy Spirit is my best friend and I walk in peace. And if that does not work, to bring one or two with you. That means call a friend and ask them to pray. And if it begins to be more than you can bear and it rises to a level where it doesn't seem to be changing, things don't seem to be shifting, you don't seem to be getting a breakthrough on that thing, whatever it is, it says, uh, if they refuse to listen, verse 17, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. So the thing is about this, I, I never saw it this way. I always thought this, this was about just issues between you and a friend. And it does say if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. So we're talking about with, between the brotherhood and the sisterhood. But then it used to really kind of feel weird when um, later on it talks about whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So he's talking about prayer. He's talking about declaring the will of God. So if I'm declaring the will of God in the earth, Heaven agrees with what I'm saying, whether it means for me to release a blessing or if it means for me to command something to be forbidden. If I'm doing that in accordance with the will of heaven, the power and the will of heaven is behind my words. And the Bible says that whatever we ask and agree on, it will be done. So spiritual warfare has the same tenor, the same texture that when the enemy comes against you and sins against you, he breaks the law and he comes against you. Let's say it's with depression. Let's say it's with uh, suicidal thoughts. Let's say you can go to war. Now, that doesn't always mean you go to war by yourself. What does it say? If that thing refuses to bow to you, bringing their sin to their attention, you go get one or two others. Or if that doesn't work, tell it to the church. And then it says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And it goes on to say that if, if you and another person agree on a thing that heaven already has proclaimed, then it will be done. He says, because he is in the midst. This is warfare. So what happens is the enemy likes to divide and conquer. He likes to get us to come outside of safety and be by ourselves and begin to say, oh, I can handle it. But the Bible says, no, 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 no. If a sin has been brought against you, you don't need to stay in that situation by yourself. And if that person or that being, let's say it's an unseen being, is not paying attention to what you say, you bring others along with you. Guys, we need to be more engaged in praying together. Do you have a person in your life that you can call and pray with? Do you have a person in your life, two persons in your life? You can, if one person can't answer the phone or can't answer a text, can you call someone else? Listen, are you afraid are you ashamed to tell people in your church when you are battling? Listen, how many times have you, I can speak for me, how many times have I heard about a person who died as a result of an illness, whether it's mental or physical, and you had no idea what they were battling? Sometimes, I don't even know if it's the majority of the time, don't put words in my mouth, I'm just saying sometimes, what is happening is a person has been convinced that they should be isolated and just handle it on their own. So the liar, the, the Satan of, of hell speaks a lie into your hearing and says, nobody's going to understand. No one's going to care. Prayer doesn't work. All these things are lies. And if we agree with the bait of Satan, which is the lie then we will want to stay to ourselves and do it by ourselves. And that is not of God. God wants us to be the body of Christ, to encourage and edify and help one another, support one another. We are our brother's keeper. Something Cain did not understand. 
The Bible says that we should bear one another's burdens, y'all. And so we have got to adopt a mindset of being in the body of Christ. I want to encourage you. Do not go through anything in this life by yourself. Now, some things are simple. You might have a fleeting thought, man, eat that whole pizza. That's easy. No, that's a lie. I'm not doing it. But some things are more subtle. The serpent was subtle in the garden and he was able to separate Adam and Eve enough so that one would agree with the enemy and then present a lie to the other and the other instead of saying, nope, Adam should have said, no, man, that is not what God said. He was able to subtly move one person's heart and then they moved another person's heart. That is not how God wants us to operate. He wants us to come to each other and say, hey, here's what I'm thinking I should do, but that doesn't feel right. And another person can say, you know what? No, let's pray together because God says this. God says that you're a conqueror. God says that he has all the power in heaven and earth. He does not want you to give up. He says, cast your burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain you. The Bible says, rest in the Lord and be patient for him. Patiently wait for him. He says that we should delight in the Lord. We should trust in the Lord. Commit our ways to the Lord. He is always willing and waiting. We just read that, that when one of his sheep is not in safety, he goes out and gets them. He doesn't want us to be alone. So with all of that said, let me go to a scripture you hear a lot with warfare. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because this scripture came in my dream twice in one particular night. And it's just something that the Lord has got me even proclaiming in our own home. And, and, and it's not to say things are wrong in our home. It just means that we sometimes have to establish in the presence of the enemy that we know our authority, that we know he's trying and he's already defeated. We need to be armed with the truth and the power of the word of God and the spirit of God, the blood of Jesus, come on somebody, and the presence of the Holy Spirit and engage our weaponry against the enemy. What does the Bible say in Ephesians 6? That the word of God is the sword of the spirit. It is a sword and it slices, it cuts, it divides between those things which are of God and those things which are not of God. So here's the one I want you to really pray on and accept this into your arsenal. The Bible says in Luke 10, 19, this is Jesus Christ. I have given you authority. Let's stop right there. The Lord wants you to know, brother and sister, that you have authority. He didn't say, I have authority. Jesus says, I have given you authority. So sometimes the enemy wants to confuse us and say, oh, just wait on Jesus to fix it. When Jesus is saying, no, 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 I've given you authority over this. You open your mouth and agree with what I've already said about you. See, the enemy subtle. He tries to get you to delegate authority where you've already been given authority. He says, I have given you authority to what? Trample or tread on snakes and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. Did he say some of the power? He said over all of the power. Listen, that doesn't mean you won't have moments where you can't pray. God, I don't want you to start feeling like you've got to be a spiritual superhero. Humility is important. When we know we're overwhelmed, when we know we're outdone, yes, we call on the Lord. But yes, as we just read in Matthew 18, when the enemy or the one who sinned against you is not listening and is not responding to your declaration that you've sinned against me, you need to stand down. Then you need to call a friend and listen. There's no shame in that. The Bible says that we should not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what is the gospel? The good news. We should not be ashamed of good news. We should not be ashamed that we have authority. We should not be ashamed that we're in the body of Christ together. We should not be ashamed to assemble and pray. We Guys, do you know how much the enemy hates us to get together and pray? Listen to me. He doesn't want us to get together and pray for our nation. He doesn't want us to get together and pray for our state, our city. And he doesn't want you to get together and pray for your homes. He doesn't want you to get together and pray for your marriage. He does not want you to get together to pray about your own situations. And so he will throw whatever lie he can at you to get you not to pray and get together. What did we just read in Matthew 18? It says that if, if you too can agree on anything... I will give it to you. You don't think Satan knows that verse? Satan's afraid of that verse. 
the verse that says, if you and another agree on anything, it will be done. If you get together and say, depression has no authority over my mind, let's pray together, sister, and y'all go in together, somebody needs to bless them, y'all. If you get together and say, the Bible says <laughs> that I have peace, in the name of Jesus, that I have not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. Come on, somebody. The Bible says that he who he will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. And sometimes we get isolated. We get away. And listen, it's it's a season where a lot of people are isolated because we have restrictions. Oh, God, somebody needs to bless them. Here we go. I'm not saying you're restricted in the spirit. The Bible says that the spirit of God is not restricted. Now, we can quench the Holy Ghost by deciding not to agree with what the spirit is doing, but we can't stop the Holy Spirit. We cannot stop the Holy Spirit. We need to agree. Whatever the Spirit is doing, we should just join in. And the Spirit is always setting people free. The Spirit is always healing. The Spirit is always ministering. The Spirit is always moving. The Spirit is always bringing things that are not into existence. That's what he did from the very beginning. And so sometimes we need to agree with the Spirit's power to bring things into existence that are not our current experience. If you're not experiencing love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness. Come on, somebody. If you're not experiencing the fruit of the spirit, you need to pray and declare, God, you've promised me peace. You've said that peace is everlasting. You said you keep me in perfect peace. And if I'm not experiencing it, that means there's something opposing the truth. And it's in my mind. It's the whisper of the evil one. And I do not agree with it. I come against any stronghold in my mind that tries to confine me within a lie. So I just want to encourage you. In Luke 10, 19, it says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all of the power of the enemy. And then he caps it off by saying, nothing will harm you. Now that's a conditional statement. Nothing will harm you. He doesn't say, Jesus didn't just say, hi, I'm here and nothing will harm you. No, he says within the context, nothing will harm you. What was the context? If you agree to use the authority I've given you, to trample over snakes and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, nothing will harm you. Oh God, somebody needs to bless this name. If you agree with the promise I've given you of authority to trample over all power of the enemy, then nothing will harm you. If you agree that you have authority, nothing will harm you. If you agree and go into the actual activity of trampling over demonic spirits, Nothing will harm you. See, sometimes we want to t tell ourselves that, oh, well, it's just because I had a bad day. Guys, listen, do you understand that a lot of things that entered into your mind were not because it came from you? A lot of things that entered into your mind. Have you ever had a thought? And you'd be like, man, where did that come from? Some things are put into your mind and they are planted by the enemy. The Bible says in Matthew 13 that the enemy sows seeds. As the, as the Lord is sowing seeds, the enemy sowing seeds. He's sowing seeds for you that he wants you to grab a hold of just as the Lord is sowing seeds that he wants you to have faith in. And we've got to agree to have faith in what the Lord is saying and not put our faith in what the enemy is saying. So let me pray with you. Uh, there's so much more we could get into right now. I don't have the time and I don't believe the Lord has given me the authority and the permission to go more into spiritual warfare. This is very um, foundational, but I want to say this to you just so you understand. If there is something negative going on in your life, God is not the author of that thing. 
God is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of depression. He's not the author of violence. He's not the author of suicide. He's not the author of cursing. He's not the author of He's not the author of these things. He's not the author of sickness. Sickness entered the world through sin, which was invented by Satan. He invented murder. Death was invented by Satan. God did not invent death. Death came through sin, through the, the authority that was what? That was given away by Adam and Eve to Satan. And then he took it and ran with it. And so I want you to have this knowledge that if you're experiencing something God did not author, you have the authority to come against that thing, to come against that experience with the word of God. And sometimes you might need to call a friend. And listen, if it rises to the level where you've already gotten together with your friends and it's not changing, call the church Tell the listen, we got so much, so much going on in our communities because we're not believing together. So much is going on in our communities, poverty, abuse of various kinds. Come on, somebody. Addictions. A lot of this stuff is going on because we have abdicated. That's the word I was thinking of our authority over these things as a group. So I want to encourage you. Let's start in our own homes Let's start with ourselves. Is there something you're battling? Is there something you haven't been able to get over? Listen, if that thing's not responding to your declaration, at first, if you haven't tried to seek the word of God about that thing and say, the word says this, I'm not experiencing this, and begin to go at it. If you haven't tried that, go at it. And if that doesn't work, call a friend and say, listen, I'm experiencing addiction. I'm experiencing suicidal thoughts. I'm experiencing depression. I'm experiencing pain in my back. Somebody bless his name. I'm experiencing obesity. I'm experiencing cancer, whatever. Guys, we need to trample over the power of the enemy. We need to get together. And if that does not work, call the church. Listen, I got a cancer diagnosis and I'm not, uh, I don't have peace about this thing. The Bible says that I'm healed by his stripes. I'm going to call the church and ask people to pray. Let's fast together. What, look, throughout a biblical history, there were times, I'm thinking about Esther, before Esther even entered into the king's court, she asked people not to eat for three days, she says, I need you to pray because when I go before the king, I know what my people have to receive, but I can't go in as I am right now. I need to go in with full humility and full dependence on God. And sometimes, y'all, things aren't shifting because we have not caught the revelation that we have authority to go before our king and depend on him in the fullness for that which we are praying for. And so I want to pray for you right now. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the spirit of faith right now. In Jesus' name, foundationally, do we believe? That is the question. You would say to people, do you believe or do you want to be made whole? You ask these questions. You said to people, by your faith, you have been healed. God, you do it by our faith. Huh? And if we have a faith deficit right now, I pray you pour into us that which we do not have. Hallelujah. Help our unbelief. Get us into your word, God. I pray a hunger and a thirst for the word of God over your people in Jesus' name. And God, even in that, God, I pray that the revelation by your spirit will engage our current circumstance. Oh my God. I speak life over you in Jesus' name. I speak Speak the dew of Hermon over you in Jesus' name. May the Spirit rest on you and empower you and uh, guide you and give you revelation of the authority you've been given. God, you said in Luke 17, or was it John 17? You said, you said that the kingdom of God is within you. Oh God, that's Luke 17. You said the kingdom of God is in everything the kingdom has is in us by the Spirit of God. Healing. Come on, somebody freedom, salvation. It's all within us. And if we engage what you've put in us, God, and we dig it out by the word of God and using our own declaration, our own prayers to receive that which you've promised, we will be exerting our authority. And God, we no longer abdicate our authority. I want somebody to say out loud, I no longer abdicate my authority. Somebody say it. 
I no longer abdicate my authority. I have authority. I'm going to walk in my authority. I'm going to walk in the word of God. I'm going to go at the enemy when he comes in and, and, the, and the spirit of the Lord is telling me to pray. I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. And even if I don't even know what to pray, I'm going to pray. And if I can't pray, I'm going to call a friend and we're going to pray. And if that doesn't work and we've been trying, it seems like everything in prayer and it's not breaking, we're going to call the church and say, can you join us in prayer? God, we need each other. We need each other. And you promise nothing will harm us. God, I thank you for this time together. I pray prophetically over everyone here, God, that they will walk in their authority. And generationally, God, I declare curses are going to be broken because people are going to begin to say, listen, I am not experiencing the promise of God in this area. I'm not experiencing the prosperity of God in this area. The Bible says that I should be as one that is overflowing in the name of Jesus. And if I have a lack in an area, uh, God, I'm praying you show me in your word where the promise is. And I'm going to pray in into your promise in Jesus name. We proclaim liberty to everyone who's been captive because the captivity is not even real. It's because we have abdicated our authority standing in a jail cell that the door is not even locked. You have all the keys in your hands, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that we will take the keys that you've given us and walk out of our prisons in the name of Jesus, by the spirit of God. Amen. Hey, look, I bless God for you. I bless God for you. Praise God for you, Amy and Doris and Raymond, uh, Andrea, uh, Shanita and Timbo and uh, Timbo, I like that name, Keith. Praise the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jamie. Look, I'm going to be praying. Um, before I come on here again as to what the Lord had me to bring. But I just feel in this hour, the Lord would have me to pray and teach some foundational things because so many of us have not been able to worship together uh, in person. So many of us have been isolated. So many of us um, are not getting our daily, uh, let's say it, some of us are not getting our weekly dose of the word of God from our shepherd. Some of us are, are, are missing Bible study, mid, midweek Bible study. And, and we're, and we're, guys, we're being dilapidated. You know, a house, if you don't um, have anyone living in that house and making use of certain things, the house becomes dilapidated, begins to uh, decay. And, and when your soul is decaying, y'all, there becomes openings for the enemy to, to even engage more so in your soul. And we don't want to be we don't want to have soft spots. Come on, somebody. We want to have a fortified house. I'm talking about your spiritual house, your person. You, you have a spirit inside of you if you're a believer, and you want your spiritual house to be fortified against the enemy. And I pray, and, and, I, uh, and I, look, I pray the full armor of God over myself every single day. Every single day. And I encourage you to do the same, that you go to Ephesians 6 and recognize that you do not wrestle against flesh and blood. <laughs> and put on the full armor of God. Yeah, I think it's time for me to go. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Bless the Holy Ghost. All right, y'all, I love you. Um, next time you see me, I'm sure I'm going to be encouraging you some more. And um, that's, why, that's why we're here, faithfireworldwide.com. If you want to check out more about the ministry, check us out on YouTube, um, Facebook, Twitter as well. I'm going to share this to the ministry page. Um, but God bless you, love you, and talk soon.